so this is the first uh, three vodcasts for unit two. Uh, this unit is going over the rock types and the rock cycle. And before we get into the actual material, let me explain just why we're doing what we're doing. All right. Uh, the main question I get studying rocks is why are we doing this? All right. Why are we studying rocks? What's the point? And to best explain that, uh, I've got a couple pictures down here from, say, Hawaii National uh, Volcano National Park, Bryce Canyon, Devil's Tower, Arches, Rocky Mountain National Park, uh, Grand Canyon, Yellowstone. These are all beautiful uh, national parks and places to go that uh, are surrounded by natural geologic features that are very interesting. And one of the main questions that people have when you look at these places is how is this form? All right, how could a small river like the Colorado uh, form the Grand Canyon? Why is uh, there a volcano here in Hawaii? What causes all the, uh, the formations that we see in Bryce Canyon? And to answer that, what you really need to do as a geologist is to be able to uh, look at the rocks that are present because the rocks are the only evidence from how these things formed and be able to describe what the rocks are and how they formed. We can look back into the past and see what the earth was like uh, at certain times by looking at the rocks that were formed at that time period. That's the reason why we look at uh, the rocks, right? If we can study the rocks and know how they form, we can describe what the Earth was like back into the past. We can go back four and a half billion years into uh, Earth's past and describe how it's changed. That's the purpose behind this. So let's go ahead and jump into the material. Uh, the first question you need to be able to answer is what is a rock? And a rock is just any solid uh, mass of mineral or mineral-like matter that occurs naturally as a part of our planet. So it could just be a mineral. That's a rock. It could be a collection of minerals that grew together or compacted together. It could even be mineral-like uh, mineral, uh, stuff that got stuck together. This could be coal. It could be seashells. It could even be plant material that was hardened into a rock. And uh, there you go. There are three different types of rocks. <clears throat> I'm sure you've seen a lot of this stuff before, but the three kinds of rocks, we're gonna get into just how they form uh, briefly, go in a little more depth later on. But there's igneous rocks, there are sedimentary rocks, and there are metamorphic rocks. Those are the three kinds of rocks that uh, we're gonna be looking at in labs uh, throughout this week. So let's go ahead and start with igneous rocks first. Igneous rocks uh, deal with volcanism. Uh, volcanoes tend to spew out lava, and lava and magma are really the same stuff. It's just whether it's above ground, it's called lava. If it's below ground, it's called magma. And it's just um, a molten rock, rock that's been melted and turned. And how this stuff turns into a, an igneous rock is it just begins to cool, whether that be on the surface or deep underground. And as it cools, the uh, the rock in, inside begins to crystallize, all right, different elements that have been melted form chemical bonds, making molecules. Those molecules will grow into crystals. And those crystals will grow until they interlock with each other, making a different uh, kind of rock under different circumstances. Whether it forms above ground from lava, it can be called an extrusive igneous rock, or below ground from magma, it's called an intrusive igneous rock. The second kind of rock are sedimentary rocks. Sedimentary rocks uh, is a little more involved process. So there's a five steps that we're going to have to write down here and then define each a little bit. First off, you got to start off with a pre-existing rock. Uh, what we have here is a collection of uh, layers that were eroded kind of uh, interestingly to make this arch. If we looked at these rocks, they're known as sandstone. Now, sandstone is obviously made out of sand. Well, how do you make sand? First off, you're going to take a rock that's already pre-existing, like uh, a volcanic rock or some other kind of rock, and you're going to weather it. Now, weathering is when you uh, either physically or chemically break down a rock into smaller units. So you take a big rock, you make it smaller. You could hit it hard with a hammer or another rock. That would be an example of physical weathering. 
You can take an acid and dissolve away the mineral just like we did with calcite. You are physically or chemically breaking it down into smaller units. Then you're going to take that, um, uh, that weathered material and you're going to move it along, move it somewhere else. That's called erosion. Erosion is the transportation of weathered material. And you can do that with one of four agents. You could use wind, you could use water, you could use a glacier, or you could even just use gravity and like a landslide. Those are the four agents that will take your material that's been weathered and move it to a new location. Now, once it moves it to a new location, it deposits that material. All right. And uh, let me go ahead and get to a little bit of animation here. So once you've weathered and you've begun to erode it in this picture, uh, we can see that there is a uh, river here that is eroding away and transporting that material, but it will also begin to deposit it in certain places. If you look on the inside of any river, inside turn, you're going to see that it's shallower, uh, maybe a little sandbar there. Well, what's physically happening there is that weathered material that's been eroded, being transported, and then deposited. All right. When it's deposited, all right, more layers get packed, compact, uh, stacked on top, and it'll actually compact the material down, locking the grains in closer together, uh, driving out that water, and eventually what will happen is that a mineral can actually grow in between it. Whether calcite or some other form of mineral will actually grow in between and act as a cement or glue, holding those together. It makes it a new rock. That's how all sedimentary rocks form, basically. Now, you can have a clastic type of rock, a sedimentary rock, which is just broken materials that have been glued together. You can have a biochemical, where say, instead of broken rocks, you could have seashells uh, that are deposited and cemented back together into a rock. You'll see several like that. Or you could even have something slightly different, just known as a chemical. And that occurs when, uh, say, salt water, all right, salt water occurs when water dissolves away the salt. Now, if that salt water evaporates away, just like you saw the sediment here filtering down, you will see uh, salt crystals precipitate out of solution and form crystals, and those crystals will grow and interlock and form a new rock. Those are the three kinds of sedimentary rocks. So the last type of rock is a metamorphic rock. Now, metamorphic rocks start off as any other kind of rock. Could be an igneous rock, could be a sedimentary, or even a, another kind of metamorphic rock. And what it will do, if you look at the Grand Canyon, uh, is a good example at the very bottom, is it, you start off with a pre-existing rock. Let's say this hunk of igneous rock here. And the agents that cause uh, metamorphic rocks to change, or metamorphism, is heat and pressure. Right, or uh, it could just be one or the other. Usually it's a combination. What can happen is if this rock was buried and heated to extreme temperatures and put under extreme pressures, it won't melt, but it'll turn a little gooey. It'll turn into like a plastic or a wax. And under enough pressure and heat, it'll actually change its shape uh, in regional metamorphism. It just changes what it looks like. It doesn't change its chemical makeup and will actually be flattened just like this. So that those grains don't melt, but they do change their shape, and this is a regional metamorphism. Right. You could also have a contact metamorphism where magma uh, gets closer and intrudes into this rock, and then chemically actually changes what it's made out of through heat. And uh, uh, you could also have a hydrothermal, where instead of uh, magma, you have just hot water. So those are the three kinds of rocks. You've got igneous, sedimentary, metamorphic. The last thing we need to discuss is just the rock cycle. Now your book has a picture of the rock cycle on page 67. The rock cycle just describes how you can change from one form of rock into another. That's all it is. Uh, but depending on the diagrams that uh, are shown, some students have conceptually tough time following these. Uh, some of them like this one, have some pictures and a couple arrows, and then some have more arrows with more di uh, with different words on there, uh, and can get pretty complicated looking. But it doesn't matter what which one of those you want to use. If you want to use the one in the book, that's fine. Um, I'm going to just diagram out 
uh, what happens on this one. So again, you have your three kinds of rocks, igneous rock, metamorphic rocks, and sedimentary rocks. It does not matter where you start. If you want to form an igneous rock, the same process must occur each time. Igneous rocks form when uh, a rock is melted, forms into magma or lava, all right, so it's a molten material, and then that molten material cools and crystallizes. Whether you start off with a sedimentary rock, buried it deep underground until it actually heated up and melted, uh, and then that magma cooled and crystallized to form into an igneous rock, it doesn't matter. Or you could start off with a metamorphic rock, too much heat and pressure actually melts, uh, then that melted rock cools and crystallized, turns into igneous rock, or even an igneous rock that is remelted, recrystallizes to form a new igneous rock. It does not matter where you start. The same process occurs. You turn into a magma, that magma must crystallize. Uh, metamorphic rock, again, the two things that cause metamorphism, heat and or pressure. If you take any of these rocks, an igneous rock, apply heat and pressure to it, you can change it into a metamorphic rock. You can take a sedimentary rock, heat and or pressure, turn it into a metamorphic rock, or another metamorphic rock, heat it and pressurize it into a higher grade of metamorphic rock. Doesn't matter where you start. And lastly, a sedimentary rock <clears throat> uh, requires you to go through those five steps. You're going to take any kind of rock. You're going to weather it. You're going to erode it. You're going to deposit it. You're going to compact it. And then you're going to um, cement it together to form a new sedimentary rock. Those are the processes that must occur. It doesn't matter where you start. That's what needs to go on. So you can use this one or any of the previous ones uh, or the one in the book. But those are the rock cycles. That is the rock cycle. You really need to have that down and conceptually understand it um, before moving on.